Good morning. And thank you for coming out on a brisk January morning. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Uh, a couple of announcements for you. Please uh, be sure to check your bulletins uh, for the announcements. We we're going to start Sunday school. How about you other teachers? You want to wait a week? Wait a week? Is that okay? All right, we're going to wait a week. We're starting Sunday school. Hopefully next week it will be um, warmer and a few more people can come. Um, we will try to have kids' time on Wednesday at 6.30 to start the year off. Um, of course, if the weather would be nasty, we'll make a decision and we'll let you know. Um, I see Dale Jansen is going to be here the 16th, so um, be full of vigor and ready to rub him in any way you can about being a Jansen, okay? Just just tell him I said so. <laughs> All right. Um, a couple other things. Uh, the 16th, we are going to be gone, Gwen and I, so we would need someone to teach uh, the catechism and Gwen's class. And then um, Gwen is scheduled for surgery the 1st of February, and we'll be down for at least probably six weeks. So if you could help teaching Gwen's class, you know, if you want to tag team it, some of you, and do a couple weeks or whatever, that would be wonderful as well. Anything else? All right, a couple changes or just to keep you in the loop, what's going to go on this morning. After the special music that Lindy is going to present to us, um, we're going to go right into our hymn of illumination, open our eyes, just remain seated for that. That's going to be kind of our, our prayer of illumination. And then um, I'm changing things up a little bit. Um, we have special music um, after the doxology and prayer. We're going to have that directly following the Lord's Prayer. Um, just remain seated for that. Um, the words will be on the screen. Um, if you kind of want to sing along, you can. It's a pretty simple little chorus, actually. So, All right. If there is nothing else, let's stand. Let's greet one another. And then we'll have our call to worship and opening prayer. So for those of you that wear it in the back, you know, <laughs> you could come up yet. There's still time. All right, the call to worship that I've chosen this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 6, and it says this, like clay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hand. Let's pray. Father, indeed, we come before you this morning, and Lord, although our numbers are small, we know that you have promised to be with us where two or three are gathered, so we know that you are here, and Lord, we give you the praise and the glory this morning as we worship together, as we open your word, as we sing the hymns and pray, Lord, may all of it be a glory to your blessed and holy name. In your son's name we pray, amen. Our hymn of praise this morning, number 442, Blessed Assurance.
You know what this is? <laughs> I've dated them. <laughs> it's, a map. it's a map, absolutely. It's a map of the state of Iowa, okay? Believe this or not, when I was in school, we actually had classes about reading maps. And then when we were done reading and understanding how to do use a map, we had to learn how to fold this thing all back together. <laughs> That's no lie, right? We did. We had to learn how to fold it so it would be all neat. And I don't remember how to do it, so we're not going to do that. All right. So that's one way. For you guys, we use these now, right? We speak into there and we say, Siri, give me the directions to Sioux City, Iowa. And in a little bit, she comes up and she's got all the directions written down. And then if you push start, you can get in your car and you can go. And when you get kind of close to where you need to turn, she'll say, in a quarter mile, turn right or turn left, or veer into road number whatever, right? And Siri is never wrong, <laughs> hardly ever. But once in a while, um, last December, yeah, we went and watched Nick with a basketball game. We went down to Central, okay? Pella, Iowa. I know Pella, Iowa fairly well. I know Central College fairly well. I had a pretty good idea where the gymnasium was for that night, but I thought just to be sure, We'll type it in. So I typed it in, and it took us into a, a back alley type parking lot. <laughs> and I knew that wasn't it. <laughs> well, what it did, it was on the back side of the building, okay? It, it recognized the back side of the building instead of the front side, and we were in the wrong place, even though Siri said we were right. And, and other people that had punched it in found out the same thing, okay? So even though we thought we knew where we were going, we ended up in the wrong place. And that's kind of the way it is sometimes with our walk with God. We think we know where we're going. We have a pretty good idea. We know what we should be doing next. Until God steps in and says, uh -uh. I've got another plan for you. I've got another direction I want you to go, okay? This morning, we're going to talk about Abraham, and God sent Abram on a journey. Didn't give him any directions. Didn't tell him how long it was going to take. He didn't even, t even tell him where he was going. He just said, I want you to go. And Abraham did, okay? And that's the kind of faith he wants us to have. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you that you know all the directions that you know exactly the plan that you have for each of us. And so, Lord, as Jeremiah said, we just pray that you will mold us, that you will make us mellow so that we will be formed into that person that you want us to be and go down that road that you want us to go. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So you guys missed out on Christmas Eve. I had suckers, so I got the candy canes, or you can get something else. I don't care. You do realize that if you don't eat the candy canes now, next Christmas, guess what you're going to have? <laughs> yeah. I don't think they get old. I don't know. I mean, they won't mold at least, so that's a good thing. All right. In a little bit, Lindy's going to sing for us. And while she was practicing, I thought of these words from John. It says this, and I know you know them. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. So that where you are, I also may be. You know the way to that place where I'm going. Lindy? Jesus, 
I heard you had a big house where I could have a room of my own. And Jesus, I heard you had a big yard, big enough to let a kid roam. I heard you had clothes your closet just the right size that I wear and Jesus I heard if I give you my heart then you'll let me go there Jesus I heard about me of your children come to eat I heard you had a great big table where every child could have his own seat and Jesus they said that there'd be plenty of good things in heaven to share and Jesus I'd just like to tell you well I should like to go there Jesus I heard in your big house there's plenty of love to go around Thanks, Lindy. Thanks a lot. If Lee, if you'll start up, um, open our eyes, please. We'll sing that together now. Our scripture this morning comes from Genesis. We're going to read from chapter 12, the first nine verses. Found on 
page 17, if you'd like to follow along. Hear the word of the Lord. Then the Lord said to Abram, Come from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions that they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, which, by the way, Abram had no idea where it was, what it was like. And they arrived there. And Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Skechem. At the time, the Canaanites were in that land. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From then there he went out toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And then Abram set out and continued toward Negev. Amen. Twenty twenty two has arrived. I guess it's a tradition that we look at that as a a fresh start, a, a new beginning, a time of hope, of excitement, a chance to move beyond the challenges that we have faced in 2021, our sinfulness, our lack of faith. A chance to wipe the slate clean, as they would say. To begin anew. And as much as all that seems very well and good, even today, we have doubts and we have fears and concerns about the unknown. What 2022 will bring. I've chosen this morning's text for that very reason. Some of you, some of us, have storm clouds gathering even as we sit here this morning. Our life's horizon is billowing with storm clouds of the unknown, of doubt, of fears. Others of you have already went through those trying times and and maybe you're at a time where things are getting better or maybe you're not. And you don't know. For others of you, especially the young people, you may be facing decisions about what you're going to do in your future what college you're going to go to or if you're going to go to college at all. Others may be facing financial troubles. I could go on and on with the list. God had put Abraham in in just such a situation. He came to Abraham and he says, I want you to leave. I want you to go. I want you to pull stakes where you're comfortable, where you know what's going on, where you know the people around you. And I want you to leave. I want you to leave your country. Your people. Your co-workers. Your friends. 
to top it off, God says, I want you to take off on this journey and um, I'm not going to tell you where you're going or how long you're going to be there. I'm not even going to tell you your final destination. Now we know that that trip ended up spanning over 800 miles, crossing the Euphrates River twice. If Abram would have had a Garmin, it would have been recalculating all the time because God just zigzagged him through the land that he wanted him to go. And while that may seem, I don't know, kind of rude, after all, God could have said, okay, Abraham, I want you to go from point A to point B. You go. And Abraham would have known where he was going and understood, and I'm sure that would have made him feel better inside. But ironically, the plan that God gave, or that God had for Abraham, actually was a great blessing to Abraham. Because if God would have sent Abraham on the most direct route, he would have ended up crossing that great desert. And who knows what would have happened out there. So God had Abraham's best interest in mind, even though it seemed to be a messy road. God says, go, I will show you the way. And of course, Abraham being that man of great faith that we read about in Hebrews 11, pulled up stakes and he started out. Just that simple faith resulted in something huge for Abraham. Because of that simple, small seed of faith, God comes to Abraham and says, wow, you're something special. And he didn't say those words, but he meant them. And he says, I'll tell you what, Abraham, because of your faith, because of who you are, I am going to make you a great nation. And remember, Abraham's 75 years old, okay, when this happens. I'm going to make you a great nation. Lots of people are going to come out of you. And Abraham and Sarai have no children, and they're 75 years old. God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you even greater than I blessed you before. God says, I'm going to make your name great. People are going to remember the name Abram. In fact, and not at this point, but eventually God says, I'm going to change your name to Abraham, a father of many nations. And you are going to be a huge blessing to my people, the Israelites. You are going to show them the way to the promised land. You are going to take them out of captivity and bring them to the land of freedom. God goes even further. He says, because of you, Abraham, all the people upon this earth are going to be blessed. And he says, the people that are my enemies will be cursed because of you. So Abraham continues along the way. And then Abraham is given Another great promise. Not only the land, but all the blessings that go with it. And Abram had heard the stories about a land flowing with milk and honey. How wonderful it was going to be. If you can imagine, it was almost like when this country was first formed, when the very first settlers came, and they went back to the old country, and they said, you cannot believe what America is like. I'm going to give you a son, Abraham. A son that will begin the generations after generations of your name. And Abraham responds to God's guidance and his promises with worship, with sacrifice, and with prayer. All of what? God had promised. But he did so for another reason. By doing so, it reminded Abraham day after day, even when things started getting tough, that God was a man of his word, that he would keep his covenant. By building altars, Abraham 
It helped him remember that God was the center of his life. That God would help Abraham persevere. That God would never break his promises. That everything that God had promised would indeed one day come true. Stout Reformed, the Reformed Church of Stout, January 2nd, 2022. What has God promised us? Let's start with what we know. First of all, we know that God's promises are true. He's not going to lie to us. He's not going to break His covenant with us. His promises are always with us to the point that our cup will overflow as the psalmist said in Psalm 23. Secondly, I believe God wants us to be patient. We know that this portion of Scripture, Abram's 75 years old, and, and we know that he didn't have Isaac until he was 99 years old. God says, I want you to trust in me. I want you to trust in, the, in me with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me and I will direct your paths. Third point. One that I think we often overlook. I believe we can learn that we are to enjoy God's blessings along the way. And that we should rejoice in them. And that it should make us feel good. And that when there are blessings flowing in towards us, we should reach out and grab as many as we can. It's not being greedy. It's taking advantage of what God wants to give to us. Fourthly, Appropriately, on such a cold and winter's day, we are to worship God. To make Him the center of our life. To rely on Him for encouragement and support. The Reformed tradition is that we come to worship God and give Him praise and glory, and we do. But another huge benefit that we get by gathering together is the fact that we can encourage one another. That we can laugh together, that we can cry together, that we can shake one another's hand and give them a hug, that we can be family. Finally, not finally, but fifth, our faith should be strengthened each and every day. Each and every day, our faith should become stronger. We should turn a little bit more of ourselves over to God and let Him take it. That one's tough, isn't it? Especially when things aren't going so good. In the next verses, which I didn't read, does anybody know what happens with Abraham? Abram and Sarai, they run into some trouble, some big trouble, and they know it's going to be trouble, especially Abraham. He knows that his life and his wife's life are in danger. They may be killed. And Abraham says, uh, let's come up with a little lie, and I'll tell these people that you're my sister. And if I do that, and if I play it out just right, they're not going to be as angry towards us, and maybe... Maybe, just maybe, they'll spare our lives. That's what Abraham did. He, he told a lie, a barefaced lie. Even though God was directing him, even though he knew God would protect him, all those things, Abraham says, well, wait a minute, God, for just a minute, you stay back there. I'm going to take the steering wheel here, and I'm going to drive it the way I want to drive it. It's okay for us to falter. It's okay. 
Every person in God's word that you read about except Jesus Christ faltered. Every last one of them. That's why Jesus came. It doesn't mean that we can take advantage of it and we can just live recklessly. It doesn't mean that. But it does mean that when we have a backsliding, when we struggle, when we get upset at God for where we are and what is going on, it's okay. I opened this morning's service with the verse from Jeremiah about being the potter in the clay. It is the same verse that Gwen had in her devotions the day that we found out what we were going to need to do to help her recover from her cancer. It wasn't the plan that we wanted that we had hoped for, that we had prayed for. But it was the most appropriate portion of Scripture, I believe, that God could have put in front of us that day. Every other week, depending on how the week is going, we gather together and we pray, our prayer group. Each week, we all write them down, what the prayer requests are for that, that time. The prayers of supplication, the prayers for healing, the prayers of praise, the praise for rain or, or whatever, I began the group on May 5th, 2020, and I wrote all those things down. On the top of that list for May 5th, 2020, Kenny Eichlenberg. We prayed. We asked God for healing. We trusted God. He took us down a road that we didn't want to go down. It ended up at a destination that in our human lives, our eyes, our hearts, we didn't want to end up there. And it goes on page after page after page of those things that we prayed for. And many things God answered the way we thought. But there's, there's so many that He didn't. And, and the one thing that we, we bring up most recently as we pray together is the fact that there are so many people who are getting that stinking cancer. And while it hurt me to see Kenny go through what he went through, and while it hurt me to see other people go through that, that I loved and prayed about, it hurt me severely. It was a sucker, sucker punch when I found out that my wife had that. And then... If that wasn't bad enough, I found out that a very dear friend was going down that same road and would be struggling with cancer. And while that road is unknown and while that road may be bumpy and while that road may be one that we'd want to get off at the very next exit, 
I believe it is a road that God has blessed. And others of you are going to, you're going to have things this year. Some of you have things that you've been tested for. You have things in your body that you know aren't quite right. And you don't know what this year is going to bring. What it has taught Gwen and myself is this. That we can be even more engulfed in what you are going through. That we can be even more sympathetic when trying times come your way. The Smites and Gwen and I have made a pact that we are going to go down this road together. We are going to go down this road hand in hand. And we are going to let God lead the way. One of the greatest things about this church, and when I say the church, I'm not talking about the building, although if you look at the stained glass windows this morning, if that isn't beautiful, I don't know what is. The church is us. And you guys are so loving and so caring and so sympathetic and so helping. God has blessed us. God continues to bless us. Even though He hasn't told us where we're going to end up. Except... One thing. On this earth, we don't know where we're going to end up. But God says, I have built you a big house. And if you believe in me, you're going to join me one day. When Jesus left, he gave us a couple little insights about how that's all going to happen when he comes back. And I was reminded of that as we as pastors met again this week. When Jesus comes back, He's not going to come all the way down here. Scripture says that we will meet Him in the air. Jesus is going to come down and we are going to go up. And don't ask me how that's going to happen because I have no idea. But it's going to happen. And then we're going to walk hand in hand and we're going to come down and we're going to rule and reign and glorify Him and this earth and the new heaven forever. That's the final destination. What happens between A and B and whether it's a zigzag line or up and down valleys and hills, I don't know. But that is our final destination. If we will just trust him as Abraham did. Let's sing, Have Thine Own Way. Let's stand.
Let's pray. Father, we come before You even now. As clay vessels that are imperfect and need a lot of shaping and a lot of molding. And so, Lord, we just pray that indeed You would mellow our hearts and mellow every part of us that we would be workable in your hands and that the piece of pottery that you have to mold us into would be beautiful when you are finished with us. Lord, we thank you again for just bringing us through that season of Christmas, a season of hope and of giving, a season of reminding us that you have given us the most perfect and greatest gift ever. And that while the birth of your son was wonderful and exciting, it was not nearly the end. That you had much to do through him. That you had much to work through. That you, Lord, would even mold your own son into a savior who would save mankind from their sin. Lord, we do pray for many of us who need you now, even in a very special way. We think of Anna, Lord. We just pray that the testing that she will have done this week may show some new insight to the doctors that they could maybe uh, find something new that would be even better for her and that she could be even more renewed than you have renewed her already. We thank you for the healing that you have given her, for the good times that you have given her. We thank you for her family, Lord. Lord, we think of Sherry Hill and others, Lord, that may not be a member of our congregation, but people that we have been praying for. We pray for them all, that you would heal them, that you would help them to grow. Lord, we do lift up Al, Lord, as um, you have given him a new direction in his life and with Cheryl and his family, Lord, we just pray, Lord, as they go down that road of, of treatments, that those treatments would be so effective that it would eliminate the cancer completely. We pray, too, Lord, that while we know that side effects of chemo and radiation can sometimes cause ill effects, we pray that they would not for Al. We pray that you will strengthen Al and Cheryl's faith in you. Lord, we do pray for Gwen. We pray that you will be with us in the month that we need to wait before the surgery, that you would give us peace. We pray, Lord, that the surgery would indeed be a total success, that as the doctor has hoped that there would be no more cancer and that the surgery would cause all the cancer to be removed and that there would need no further treatments. So Lord, we pray that the tissues that will be tested when that surgery is done, that they would show no signs of cancer. And Lord, we pray as we have been told that it will be a long and rather difficult recovery, Lord, that you will be with Gwen and I and that you will help us through that as well. Lord, we thank you and praise you for friends and family and we thank you especially now for this church family for the many acts of kindness, of love and concern and other things that have already been shown to us and to Alan and and to others. So many times, Lord, they have come up to the plate and, and have did so much more than could ever be imagined. And that's because of their love, which comes from your love, and we praise you for that. Lord, we pray for our, our shut-ins, As they begin a new year, we just pray that you will bless them. May we be a blessing to them. May we visit if we can. May we send cards, phone calls, prayers, whatever it could be, just to cheer their day as well. And again, Lord, we thank you for this great country, the United States of America, for the men and women who have fought bravely and who continue to serve for the freedoms that we enjoy. We thank you, Lord, for all of this, and we thank you especially for your Son again, Jesus Christ, 
who has taught us that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. weeks came about, it was my plan that we would go down the year of 2022 with the journey of prayer. And so I would encourage you this year that you would pray even more than you have prayed in the past, that you would spend more time each and every day talking to the Lord. And I would ask, I would encourage all of us to take our church directory and each week that you would pray for every person that is listed in that book at least once so that each day someone of our family will be lifted up. Whether it's in praise and thanksgiving or whether it's in trial or temptation, that we would lift one another up. And through that, that we would encourage one another but even more, 
that God would receive the glory. He has given us so much. Let's stand and let's have our doxology and prayer for that. Let's stand. Praise God from Father, you indeed have blessed us materially. You have given us so many wonderful things. But you have blessed us spiritually as well. And Lord, may we understand and accept and use that power of prayer that, Lord, we would cast all our cares upon you, that we would leave them at your feet, and that through that, we too would be blessed over and over. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 436, The Solid Rock. God's benediction. Go then to a place that I will show you, and all God's people said, Amen. Our closing chorus, number 223, Oh, how he loves you and me. <laughs>